Good afternoon. On behalf of the family, let me tell you thank you so much for your presence here today as we celebrate and remember the life of Miss Madge, Leela, Christelle, Rainwater, Connor, or Miss Chrissy as I knew her. We're so glad that you could be here today. Uh, and we come today drinking out of a mixed cup for all of us. Uh, today it is filled, of course, with grief as we are without our loved one today uh, physically. And so today all of us are processing our grief in different ways. But we also are people who do not grieve without hope because we know uh, the hope we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know the hope that Miss Chrissy had as well. And so we know that she is whole in his presence today, that she is celebrating with him, and that she has seen him face to face. And all of us who have the Lord Jesus in our heart long for that day as well. So we come today ready to celebrate with the Lord, but also to be together and remember our dear friend. And so we want to ask you, as you've already done, to continue to be a support for the family, uh, to be a prayerful body for these folks, not just today, but in the days to come after this, which we know will be some of the hardest times. But thank you so much for your presence here this afternoon. In honor of Miss Chrissy, uh, one of the things that she specifically asked was that the s &E choir uh, be a part of her funeral service. And uh, believe it or not, this is a woman, probably doesn't shock you, had her funeral all planned out, ready to go. It was just a few phone calls that had to be made. And uh, this is one of the groups that she wanted to be a part of her celebration service today. The s &E choir are the combined choirs of Salem United Methodist Church and Elizabeth Baptist Church. And we are grateful to have him, them as part of our celebration today. So after our opening prayer, they're going to lead us in a song. And then uh, Mr. Luke Lucas will share some words with us. So let's uh, pray, invite the Lord's presence here today, and ask him to be honored in what takes place. Father God, we come to you as our great creator. We come to you as the one who has numbered all of our days and has kept them in your mind. And Lord Jesus... We come with heavy hearts today, and so we come asking that you'll send the Holy Spirit among us as the great comforter to work in our hearts and to remind us of your great love over us, the same love that won Miss Chrissy's heart. And now, Lord Jesus, we are so grateful that you would take her to be with you and watch over her, and we can entrust her to you today. Would you minister to us in our grief, Lord, as we remain here? And we ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen.
What a privilege. Wow. Can I put in my order for when? <laughs> I think I just found something. Madge, Leela, Christelle, Rainwater, Connor. Now that's a name. That's a mouthful, isn't it? It's, as they say, it's uh, kind of like standing in front of a fire hydrant, get a drink of water. But that's who she is. That's who she was. You know this. You know it probably better than I do. I was trying to find some way to, to even start, and uh, I saw this. Tell me what you think. He wrote this. Every now and then you, you get to meet them. Their voices, their faces are different from ours. Stronger, quieter, happier. There's a radiance about them. They begin where most of us leave off. They don't draw attention to themselves. You tend to think that you're being kind to them when they're actually being kind to you. They love you more than others, but they need you less. They usually seem to have a lot of time. You'll wonder where it comes from to be with them. To put it at the very least is great fun. Does that, does that sort of do it a little bit? That's Chrissy. To me it is. Chrissy had time for me. She had time for everybody in this room. And look at everybody in this room. <laughs> She had time for every one of you, didn't, didn't she? She loved you all. You wonder where all that comes from. Well, she tell you in an instant. She met the Lord Jesus Christ. He came calling her name. I don't know if he used all those names. <laughs> I mean, boo is, boo is good for me. Probably good for you too. But he called her in that voice and she knew she had to follow. She knew that he was home. And so she became home in a way for everybody in this room and for anybody she met. So easy going, so full of, of love and so full of kindness, so full of fun, laughing. Man, I tell you what, you could not get away with getting down on yourself or on other people with Chrissy around. She wouldn't let you. She'd come in and you'd start off, I don't know what, kind of sour, and you'd end up laughing. You'd end up happy. You, don't, you didn't even know how it happened. It was like it was some sort of jujitsu martial art kind of thing that she pulled on you all the time. She was great at that. She got into all kinds of stuff. She was... She was something else. She was a Miss Pris. I don't know. She was Chrissy. She's boo. I got the privilege of looking in her Bible. Daryl, let me look at it. And I spent some time reading her notes. And boy, what a, what a source of strength. Now I know. Now I know so much more about her strength and where it came from. She put this, I, I'll read just a couple of things. She says, we are, and I don't know where she got these, I don't know if this is her, from her pen or from someone else's, but she put down, we as people are prisoners of time and only have our perspective. God's perspective is total and complete beginning to end. When we play God, our resources are limited and depleted. So we must hope in the Lord, as Isaiah tells us. Our focus needs to be on the burden bearer and not the burden. Faith is believing in advance what will only make sense in reverse. Suffering, sorrow, and disappointments are all temporary. Faith is a homesickness for a home we know and long to go to. Now, Chrissy didn't know suffering, sorrow, or disappointment. 
I mean, we know those things, but Chrissy was above that, right? No. No, no. She knew what burdens were. She carried many of them. They only sort of picked up, I think, as time went on. And there was that thing about Chrissy, that transparency, that lightness, that, that happiness that drew you in and made you feel at home because she responded out of her own homesickness. She knew that this world was great and wonderful and fascinating and it wasn't enough. And she wouldn't settle for just this world. And if you spent time with her, you didn't want to settle for it either. You knew there was something bigger. I drafted on Chrissy. I don't know about you. Still do. Think about it. Think of why you're here today. Paul said this of the Corinthian congregation that he loved and cared for and cherished and worked with, and cried over, pleaded with. He said, you yourselves are our letter of recommendation written on our hearts to be known and read by all. Do you know who you are today? You are Chrissy's letter of recommendation written on her heart to be known and read by all. That's who you are. And the day hurts. Hurts bad. I just don't know all the facts on the ground. You don't either. We don't know why. And the only thing I need to do is to pray a prayer that I learned from someone else in the face of all this. Lord, give to us what we would ask for if we only knew what you know. But I'll tell you what happened. And I get this from someone else too. His name is Timothy Keller. He writes about Jairus' daughter in his book King's Cross. It's about the Gospel of Mark. When he is called to this child's side who is desperately sick and who dies, Jesus delays. And we don't understand why he does things like that. But sometimes he does. And Keller writes this. We can't explain his delays. But we know that he knows exactly why he's doing what he does. And when he sees that little girl, lifeless, he does exactly what this child's parents might do on a sunny morning. He sits down, he takes her by the hand, and he says this, it's an Aramaic, Talitha Kumi. But Keller explains that that's a way of saying, honey, it's time to get up. And she does. Jesus faces death, the most unyielding, relentless enemy of the human race, and such is his power that he holds this child by the hand and he gently lifts her up right through it. Honey, honey. It's time to get up. Jesus is saying by his actions, if I have you by the hand, death itself is nothing but sleep. Several days ago, not according to anybody's plans in this room or anyone else's plans, but only his, and I'm not his counselor, so you need to take it up with him, he reached over to her and said, Honey, honey, it's time to go. It's time to go. Trust me. And Chrissy, steeped in God's word, steeped in the trust and hope that only God can give, smiled that radiant smile, and she says, You mean I get to go home now? Let's go. And in her rest in his arms, in his strong arms, and his strong arms are there for you too. He's telling her now, honey, it's time to get up. It's time to get going. 
And so he'll hold you close. He'll hold all of you close. He's good at that. I just wanted to tell you all, you know, Dal, Drake, Daryl, Chris. Wow. The love that she has for you is stronger than death. Because the Lord himself is stronger than death. And he's going to hold you close in the palm of his hand. And Chrissy, boo, is the Lord's delight. You know, I was thinking about this before I came. Leela, I don't understand how you and Jimmy could have even disciplined Chrissy <laughs> growing up. You know what? I have this picture. I have this picture. Do y'all remember the Looney Tunes cartoon when the big dog is taking care of the little kitten? And the kitten gets into all kinds of stuff, and the dog brings her up and goes, oh, no, 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 no. And then the kitten just looks up, and he goes, oh, like this. Well, it's Looney Tunes. Chrissy's, Chrissy's there. She, under, she gets it. That's what I feel like. I feel like you, couldn't, you just couldn't be mad with her long, could you? Never. Never. You loved her well, Leela. You love her still. You love your Jimmy well, you love him still. She loves you back. She loves you still. She's, she's telling a lot of people about you. And she's telling a lot of people about you here, too. And I want you to leave here her letter of recommendation. I want you to recommend the Savior to others, too. You can do this. She's great at it. She's wonderful. She's boo. We love her so. We miss her so. Though I know I'll, I'll never lose affection for people and things that went before, I know that I'm often going to think about them in my life, in my very small life. I got to spend time with, be near, love, laugh, and be loved by a great soul a really big soul, the radiant, precious soul, known to all of us as Chrissy. I'm so grateful. Could I lead us in a prayer? Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Chris Dell. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own flock, a lamb of your own fold a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. I see one giant choir here today, and you know I love me some choir. s &E, we got some sopranos, we got some altos, we got a lot of tenors and a lot of basses. So I'm sure Christy's going to enjoy this and singing with us. As you stand and let's sing together, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Let's stand. Ask who that
Chrissy's laughing at me right now. You have Elvis, you have Madonna, and you have Chrissy. One name, and you know who you're talking about. Chrissy, Christelle, boo, crazy woman. That's two words, isn't it? <laughs> There are places I remember all my life Some have changed, some forever Not for better, some have gone Some remain, all these places have their moments Where lovers and friends Still can recall some are gone and some are living in my life. I love them all, but of all these friends and lovers, there is no one who compares to you but these memories. Lose their meaning when I think of love, something new. Though I know I'll never ever lose affection for people and things that went before. Oh, I know I'll often stop and think about you. Am I? I love you so Chrissy, Daryl and I were way beyond Beatlemania. We we actually entered into Beatlemaniacs. Would you agree with that? 
couldn't help but to do a Beatles song for Chrissy. That was not on the agenda, by the way. And, and, and Daryl, if you want to dock my pay, buddy, you can. I, 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 you know, I'll pay you, okay? Is that all right? I'll pay you. The rainwaters have been such a blessing in my life. You will never know. And if I get a lump in my throat, it's okay. All right. I'll get there sometime, but we're going to be okay. It's just been such an influence. I moved here from Sumter when I was 12 years old. Daryl moved to Colum- I mean, to, uh, to Timminsville when he was 12. And so we've said that we passed each other in, in the night. And his friends became my friends. And, uh, and his friends became his friends that I now know, and they're my friends. And, boy, this is a confusing thing, isn't it? But, uh, but anyway, when I moved to, to Florence, I uh, didn't have very many friends. And I met uh, Skipper Duffy, actually. And Skipper introduced me to Eddie Glass. And like I say, Eddie Glass introduced me to the rest of the class. Uh, <laughs> And one of those, lo and behold, was Chrissy. Can you imagine? And she just acted like she was one of my best friends forever. And she always invited me to her house, a wonderful house for all kinds of parties. And, and neither one of us at that particular time knew the name of Jesus in the appropriate way. And, uh, and those are, there are many faces that I can see in this crowd by the way, Daryl, I told you it should have been at the Civic Center. You just didn't believe me, did you? That, uh, that we did some things that we don't want our parents to know about at the Rainwater's house uh, at, through the years there. But we just had a lot of fun over at that house. And then, lo and behold, as the years move on, uh, going into my senior year in high school, the Lord started doing something in my life. And, and I had not been in a church in several years. Had never crossed the threshold that I can remember. The only time I can remember going to church was at Central to see Paul Anderson, the world's strongest man. Do you remember that? And uh, somebody conned me into going to that, and that was about it. But God started doing something in my life. It was a, a miraculous thing, and I didn't know how to explain it. And so as I, one night in my bedroom all alone, made a commitment to Jesus Christ to change my life, he did. And he made me a new person, a new creature. And I'm still amazed at that to this day. And so I didn't share that with anybody, but a couple of people, and one of them was, was uh, Hope Benton Hannah, started telling her that Jesus was doing something in my life. Didn't know how to say that. Didn't know. All I could say was God was doing something in my life. Simultaneously, and I didn't understand it, didn't know it, because I wasn't involved in churches, God was doing a mighty move in Florence at that time at First Presbyterian Church. And Hope was telling me, she said, you know, there's, a, there's a, a movement going on, and I don't know that she was saying that. I don't know how she told me, but she said other people are being affected too. In fact, we're having these groups where we get together and we share what Jesus is doing in our lives, and, and why don't you come one time? And I said, no way. Heck no, I'm not. Uh, never, ever, never. So she kept after me. And so finally, one time I gave in, and I've shared this story with many of you. Might have even shared it at Jimmy's funeral. I'm not sure. But I said, I said, okay, okay, Hope, I'm going to come. Because she told me I didn't have to pray. I didn't have to read the Bible. I didn't have to do anything except sit in the corner and just listen. She promised me that. She promised. And, by, and I believed her. I fell for it. So, <clears throat> so I said, all right, well, where is it going to be? And she said, at Chrissy's house. And I said, what? <laughs> At Chrissy's house, she's as lost as I am and has been. And I said, do you know what's going on at Chrissy's house? And I said, oh, yeah, you've been a part of it. And she said, well, things have changed. Now, I, didn't, I wasn't smart enough to pick on the fact that things had changed in my life. So I said, okay, I'm going to go. So I go there, and I don't mean to make this thing so long, but I finally go. I told her I was going to be, I had to work. I was going to be late. I was dirty. I I had a a labor job. I get there and and have to go down those stairs and open that door, and all of Florence was in there. I could not believe how many people were in there, and I was just scared to death. So I I slid back behind a bunch of people that I knew, 
but yet was still very, very uncomfortable, and we had this wonderful time. I was so thrilled that I was there and so excited. So then it got tense. At the end, Chrissy stood up and said, okay, we're going to close in prayer. And, and she said, I want everybody to stand up in a circle and hold hands. And I said, Hope, you're a dead woman from this point on. <laughs> and she said, I'm gonna go around the, we're going to go around the room and each one of you pray. And I just about passed out at that point. <laughs> so Chrissy was sensitive enough to God to say, if you do not want to pray, you just squeeze the person's hand next to you and it will skip over you. And I said, thank you, God, for that. And so Chrissy looked me dead in the eyes and said, Sam, would you open us in prayer? (laughs) I can tell you it was not that funny. The only thing, having not been in a church and kind of being a little hippie, universal guy, the only thing I could think to pray was something like, twinkle, twinkle, little star. (laughs) Thought that wouldn't work, so how about the Boy Scout oath? I, I just didn't know. I had no idea what to pray. Scared to death. That was the first time. I have no idea what I prayed. All I knew is that hope was dead meat from that point on. And then we continue to have those things over at Chrissy's all of the time. The transition from the wild times to the spiritual times was unbelievable. And the rainwaters were right in the middle of that. And they were so gracious to open their home and have just everything go on there that was godly and real and so exciting. And I fell in love with you all and have been that way ever since. And you've been such a part of my life with uh, each one of you in different categories and especially Chrissy. The thing I loved about Chrissy is that she taught me how to, to live life. She just milked everything for everything. She taught me how to love other people. She, it didn't matter whether you were the ditch digger or royalty. She treated you exactly the same. Exactly the same. She loved beyond anybody that I've ever seen. She laughed beyond anything that I've ever seen. Everything was funny to her. It didn't matter what it was, but it was, she was going to get some humor out of it some way. But the one thing that was the most important thing in her life was Jesus. No doubt about it. Jesus Christ. It was back, way back in high school, and it remained that way throughout the rest of her life. I have to tell you that I'm, I'm stumped on this one. Can't figure this one out. And I have to tell you, too, that I thought I was very, very special to her. But obviously, you do, too. (laughs) So here's what else I've learned from Chrissy. We don't know what tomorrow holds. If you need to tell somebody you love them, you need to tell them you love them. If there's something you need to do, you need to do it. There's nothing more important than relationships. There's nothing more important. If you've got a silly fight going on with somebody, you need to stop it. If you've got some issue that's causing you to be mad, quit it. Because you know what? You don't know you're going to be here tomorrow. You don't know that they're going to be here tomorrow. So, Chrissy, I can't imagine earth without her. But I also can't imagine heaven with her. I I can hear her saying something corny like, Okay, I'm here. The party starts. And then saying something like, Hey, hey, you, you get off of my cloud. That was funny, wasn't it? That was a good one. Chrissy loved that. I can tell you Chrissy loved that. She was dear and special. Heaven will not be the same, but neither will we. And we need to cherish her memory. Cherish her love. Take advantage of every moment. Every moment. Love Jesus as much as Chrissy did. To put him first in everything in your life. Because only then can you love others as Chrissy loved others. Jesus. What do you think of Jesus?
Lord is so precious Cause when I stumble His loving arms hold me close So that I won't fall I find Him a comfort To heavily lean on Him And know for a fact that's just what he wants me to do. Oh, he's precious. The Lord is so precious. The master of wind and storm cares even for folks like you. Oh, he's precious. The Lord is so precious. The master of wind and storm is even for me Life's not always easy Life's not always pleasure Sometimes it is oh so tough to get through the day He knows what he's doing He knows what is best for us So let the Lord lead that's just what he wants us to do. Oh, he's precious. The Lord is so precious. The master of wind and storm cares even for folks like me. Oh, he's precious. The Lord is so precious. The master of wind and storm is even for me Weak and wounded sinner Lost and left to die Oh raise your head for love is passing by Come to Jesus Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, and live. Now your burden's lifted, be carried far away. Oh, precious blood has washed away the stain. Sing to Jesus, sing to Jesus. Sing to Jesus and live Like a newborn baby, don't be afraid to crawl And remember when you walk, you sometimes fall So fall on Jesus, fall on Jesus, fall on Jesus and live Sometimes the way is lonely Steeped and filled with pain So if your sky is dark And pours the rain and Cry to Jesus Cry to Jesus Cry to Jesus And live And when love spills over and music fills the night and when you can't contain your joy inside then dance to Jesus and dance for Jesus and dance for Jesus and live and with your final heartbeat Kiss the world goodbye Then go in peace and laugh On glory's side Then fly to Jesus Fly to Jesus Fly to Jesus And live Fly to Jesus Fly to Jesus, fly to Jesus, and live, and 
Fly to Jesus. Fly to Jesus. Fly to Jesus. And So this is my sixth funeral since Thanksgiving. And some of you are ministers, and that may not seem a lot to you, but at Trinity, it is a lot. I've been pastor here for about six years, and we've never had a year that's had more than four funerals. So uh, it's starting to wear on me a little bit. And what really is hard for me is that some of those funerals have been folks of ours who their bodies have begun to betray them and they're just getting older and they go home to be with Jesus and that's hard for us but it it seems like the natural order of things and we are able to walk with them through really difficult times and their families but a couple of those funerals have been like this one with Chrissy where for me it just seemed to have come too soon and so uh, there are times that I just have to press into the Lord and I have to uh, seek his wisdom and to seek his heart and just remember of his great love for us and how much he cares for us even in the midst of our, our hurt. And and Daryl and I were talking about some of Chrissy's favorite passages and she shared or he shared with me that just about anything from Isaiah she loved. And so I need some passages from Isaiah today and I thought I would share those with you. One is Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 that reminds you and me that the thoughts of the Lord are not our thoughts, and His ways are not our ways. And so on days like this, I just have to come to the Lord and say, Lord, I don't understand. Lord, I don't know. I don't know where to go from here, but you do. And we can trust that the Lord is going to walk with us, not just today, but in the next few days to come. And so as a pastor, sometimes when things like this happen, I just don't know what to do. I just don't know what I should be doing. So sometimes I just, I just stand in the background and I listen. And sometimes I just stand in the hall or I just sit in the living room. And this past week I, I sat in a hospital room and I just listened. I just listened to what was being said and what was being shared about a woman that we all love so very much. And if it's okay, I just wanted to share with you a few things that I heard. And uh, we don't have time for me to share everything, but these are the ones that st stood out to me this week, and I think they'll ring true for you. You know, Chrissy Connor loved the Lord, and she loved to tell people about the good news of what he's done for us. She loved Jesus, and it was amazing to me to hear stories of Daryl walking into the kitchen and catching her with her hands lifted and just singing a praise song and just worshiping Jesus all by herself and just dancing in his presence and just loving on the Lord. And that's who she was, but she was also a woman who loved the good news of what Jesus Christ has done for us. And she shared it with so many of us. You know what just captured my heart and my attention as I stood at that bedside and I listened, I kept hearing person after person say this, Chrissy Connor is the reason that I know Jesus. Would that every one of us in this room have that said about us. That when the Lord finally calls us home, we take somebody else with us because of our love for Jesus and our witness for him. Chrissy Connor loved the Lord and she was a passionate witness for him. You know what else? She loved people. You know how I know that? Because you're here. It was something just about her personality that just drew you in. And I can't really describe it, but I just know this. When you feel loved, you want to be around the person that makes you feel loved. And Chrissy was someone who made me feel loved, and it made me want to be around her. And I think you're the same way. She loved people, all kinds of people, all different backgrounds, all kinds of different social stratus in life. She loved people. And we are better because we were loved by her. 
You know, Daryl, she loved you so much. She was such a good wife to you. I know you had your scraps from time to time, but it was worth it. She was such a good woman. And I know she made your life so bright. She loved you so much. You know, Chris and Dal and Drake, your mama just loved you. Man, she loved you. She loved to see what you become. She loved seeing you home. She hated when you went away, but she was glad when you came back. And your mama just loved you. And I hope that her love just rings in your heart as you continue to grow up into the men that she had hoped you would be and start your own families and raise your own children. I just pray that that love will just ring in your heart and that you'll be able to love your family and love your children like she loved you. And Miss Leela, she just adored you. She was so thrilled to be able to just love and minister to you. She's so grateful to be your daughter and I think she just loved the woman that you modeled for her to become. And I think that the greatest testimony to how much she loved you is the woman that she became. She loved you so much. And I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that you've lost her here. But I'm looking at three pews full of people that are going to make sure that you know how much you're loved still. And one day, you'll see her face to face again and I can't wait for that day. You know, she was also a connector of people, and again, this day is proof of that. You know, I do a lot of funerals, but I don't see a lot of funerals that have black and white, young and old, wealthy and poor, all kinds of different people honoring that person. She was a connector of people. She could walk into a room and she could introduce you to somebody you never met before and there was something about her that you could become fast friends with them just because she was in the middle. She could make you feel included. She could make you feel special. She could make you feel a part. She was a connector of people. And I'm so blessed to have met some of you just because I knew her. And last but not least, she was a woman of prayer. And some of you know that because... You've prayed with her, and you've heard her talk to Jesus like she talks to no one else. But some of you know that because she's been praying for you for a long time. I know some of you have even called her and asked, Miss Chrissy, are you still praying for me? And you know what she says? Yep. She's praying for you because she loves you, but for some of you, she has prayed for you because she knew You needed a relationship with Jesus. And she has been praying that the greatest gift she ever knew in life would be the gift that you come to know too. And that is that Jesus Christ lived on this earth for 33 years, lived a perfect life, never one time dishonored the Father. He died on a Roman cross not because he had to, but because he wanted to, to glorify our God and to love you. And he shed his blood because he knew that on your own, you could never reach God the Father. And so he did everything that was necessary so that your sins could be forgiven and you could live eternally with him, not just on this earth, but one day when you go to die, you can be in the presence of Jesus. That death doesn't have to be the end. It doesn't have to be the sting for us. That we can live in his presence forever. And this can just be the beginning, not the end. And she's been praying for you. I can't think of any better gift that you could give her than to give Jesus your heart today. I can't think of any better gift that would honor her life and her memory better than that. And if you don't have any idea what I'm talking about, that's okay. I'm not going anywhere after the service. You come see me. And I'd be glad to tell you about the Jesus that Chrissy Connor loved. And that loved her so deeply. And so I think today, you know, what do we do from here? And a couple thoughts come to mind. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, Isaiah 26, 3 says this. That he will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are set on him because they trust in him. And I'm just like Luke. I can't possibly explain why the Lord has allowed this to happen. I can't possibly 
understand his mind, but I do know this. I can trust him because I've known him and I'm loved by him. And we can trust him too. And if we don't know the Lord, I know this, that that free gift of eternal life is extended to you today. Please don't leave this place without having having taken advantage of all that is available to you. So as we leave this place, can I give us a vision beyond this morning, beyond what we're feeling right now? Can I give you a vision of what Miss Chrissy is doing right now, where she is and what she's seeing? This is Revelation chapter 21. And I need to hear this today, and I think you do too. This is what John said. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God." And he will wipe every tear from their eyes. Praise God. And there will be no more mourning. Or death or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said. I am making everything new. And then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And to him is thirsty. I will give to drink without cost from the spring of living water. And he who overcomes will inherit all this. And I will be his God and he will be my son and my daughter. Miss Chrissy overcame just a few short days ago. And we'll overcome too one day. We can be at peace with the Lord. Today is the day of salvation. What will you do with the last gift she ever offered you? What will you do? love of Jesus sing his mercy and his grace in the mess pride and bless he'll prepare for us a place when we all Victory, 
while we walk the pilgrim's pathway clouds will over spread the skies but when we're traveling days all over not a shadow not a sigh when we all get to heaven there rejoicing it will be when we all see Jesus we will sing we will shout we will sing and shout the victory when we all what a day of rejoicing it will be when we all we will sing we will shout we will sing we will shout we will sing sing and shout the victory some of you didn't have the opportunity to speak to the family before the service today and so instead of having the family process out uh, the family is just going to remain seated here and you're welcome to come and speak to them after the service and if you're a member of the family, we have food for you afterwards. And if you're not a member of the family, we don't have food for you. <laughs> so unless any of you preachers want to multiply the fried chicken, it's only for the family, okay? But you can greet them as long as you want, and then you can go home and eat your own food, okay? Thank you so much for being with the family today. And thank you for what I know is going to take place. You're going to be with them after today, you're going to still be there to hold their hand, to hug their neck, and to pray for them after we leave this place. And so what I want to ask us to do is let's just have the family sit and let's stand in their honor and their honor of the Lord and of Miss Chrissy. And let's be dismissed today and ask the Lord to bless us as we leave. So let's pray together. Your great Father God, we just confess to you that we are hurting but we trust you, that we are in need of your love and we receive it from you. And Lord Jesus, we trust and place our faith in you as our great hope beyond this life. And would you remind us that our loved one is in your presence? She is whole. A heart attack can never touch her again. She will never again see the trials of this world. But we can know joy in your presence and in hers again. Holy Spirit, would you comfort us? And would you be with us as we go from this place? And we ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. You are dismissed.